Today we are going to be getting the full stack open source Svelte Kit e-commerce site, which I have been building out over the last couple months, set up and working on your machine. I'm going to show you guys how to clone the repo, how to get planet scale set up, how to get Stripe set up, how to get Cloudinary set up, how to get all your environment variables working, how to get the development server working. I'll show you how the data model works, how all of these things fit together and how you can get a pretty cool. Well, I mean, it is in production. It is done. It is ready. A production ready e-commerce site set up for yourself. You're still gonna have to bring your own content, add your own stuff. There's a lot of places here where I feel like you definitely wanna change it and add stuff, but this should be a really, really good baseline for you guys to just get this working. And also if you're just trying to learn Svelte or just get into web development, this is a great place to start to just take a real project, which is working in production. It's done. You can take a look at how it's working, play with it on your machine, and uh, you'll learn a lot from it. So if you guys enjoy this, make sure you like and subscribe. I'll have videos coming very soon going over a deep dive into how all these different pieces work. Like today, we're not going to talk about like how the authentication works, how the database works, all these different things. Instead, we're just going to focus on talking about the uh, setup here. We'll do the deep dives into each piece coming very soon. To begin, we're going to start right here. If you go to the link down in the description, you will get to the Git repo for this project. It's just called Svelkit Ecommerce. Right now, it is a real site and it's now renamed to Sediment Art. The repo is still Svelkit Ecommerce. What you're going to want to first do here is you're going to want to go up here and you're going to want to fork this. I'm going to go ahead and click fork. I'm going to say, um, we'll just call this demo video example. I'm going to set the owner to be, um, I can't do it on my own account because I already have it here. So I'm just going to do this in the insider viz, um, insider viz organization, and I'll just leave the description as it is. You guys can name this whatever yours should be. Once this fork is created, it'll take a second here to fill everything in. And then once that is done, we're gonna go ahead and clone this onto our computer. So I'm gonna go ahead up here. I use the GitHub CLI, so I'm just gonna grab this here. Once you've gotten that copy to your clipboard, go into your CLI or however you do your Git repo cloning. I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna say GitHub repo clone insider viz demo video example. We'll hit enter here. It'll clone everything down. And then once that's done, we can open this up in our editor and we can get going on getting this set up. Now that we have this project downloaded locally onto our computer, we need to get a bunch of dependencies set up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do pnpmi to install our, all of our dependencies. But if you look over here, we're gonna have this .env.example file. This is gonna basically be our to-do list on everything we need to do to get set up to get this actually working. Um, I have within the readme here, I have a written version of basically all these instructions, uh, but I'm going to go through them here in the video. So right here, I think the best place to start is probably actually going to be with Cloudinary and then the database. And you'll see why in a second. To get started with Cloudinary, which just so happens to be the sponsor of this series, they're fantastic and you'll see why here in a second. Uh, what we're going to first need to do is just get an account created and get an environment created. I've already done that. I already have one here. Um, just run through their setup wizard. And once you're here, we need to get a couple things. First, I'm going to go down to my dashboard here and we're going to get our credentials. My cloud name here is Insider Viz because I'm using the Insider Viz cloud just because I use that for a bunch of different projects here. So I'm going to grab my cloud name here to be Insider Viz. We're going to go back to our project. I'm going to go ahead and create a .env file. And I'm going to actually go back over here to this guy. I'm going to copy all of these into my .env. And then I'm going to start up here. And we're going to go to our Cloudinary. And I'm going to say my cloud name is Insider Viz. Now, really, the only other piece of setup we need to do for Cloudinary is get an upload preset. Within the admin part of this website, we can upload images, manipulate them, do all that stuff, which is super, super helpful. It sucks to implement that custom. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our settings. We're going to go into upload. We're going to go down here and we're going to go into our upload presets. I've already created a, an upload preset here of admin upload. I just set it to be unsigned. It's already protected behind the admin page. I'm not too worried about it. So create an upload preset here. I called mine admin upload. Make sure that we can, the access mode is public. Then just take whatever name this is and we're going to move it over here. So mine is admin upload. We're going to go ahead and do that. And now our Cloudinary is all set up and ready. Now we can get into what will be the bulk of this video, which is going to be the database and data model setup. If you look at the actual site here, we already have a lot of content in here. We have four products. Each product has a bunch of sizes attached to them, has a bunch of pictures, all this nice stuff. So we need to load this content into the site. In order to do that, I created this seed.ts file which is currently set up with variables that point to my environments, but we need to get this set up with variables which will point to yours. 
So to begin, we're first gonna get our Planet Scale database set up. If you go to Planet Scale, you create an account, do all that stuff, you can create a new organization. And if you don't already have a database, you can create a new one for free. Here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, under my sediment art organization, we're gonna create a new database called Demo Video DB. I'm gonna set this to be hobby because we're just using this for development. And actually you can get really, really far with just a hobby database, you would be very surprised. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and grab a hobby DB here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and create this. We're not gonna do any database branching setup stuff in this video. If you're interested in that, stay tuned for the deep dive on deployments at the very end here. But for right now, all we need to do is just go here. I'm gonna click on drizzle to get my connection strings here. I'm gonna create my new password. This will be deleted by the time the video goes live, so don't worry about me leaking a bunch of credentials here. This will generate our username and password for us. All we really need actually is down here. It's this database host, database username, and database password. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab these. We're gonna go back to our .env. I'm just going to replace these three with these three. Now that we've done that, the only other thing we need is this database connection string. The reason for that is because they, these three are used to connect to the plan and scale serverless driver, but for our c.ts file, we're just using the normal MySQL connection string, and also for our database push, we're just using the normal MySQL connection string. So we need to get that. The way we're gonna get that is I'm just gonna go back up here, I'm just gonna say node.js, we can scroll back down here, grab this giant database URL, make sure it says reject unauthorized true. We're gonna go ahead and hit this. Whoops, we'll delete that. Paste this guy in here. And just like that, our planet scale is set up. I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna go to my database dashboard. It's gonna be generating everything for me. And now we're gonna go ahead and get our c.ts set up. So like I said, we need to actually put some data in the site to get it working. If we load up the site right now, it'll be empty. It'll point to a bunch of 404s where we don't have images and stuff. So we need to actually fill this with content. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my c.ts file and we're going to go ahead and fill this in with some real products and real data. So for this video, I think it makes sense to just keep using some demo products. I have my demo Stripe product. I have my, my first product. Uh, these two will work just fine. Um, for the data model here, we have products, and then each product has a bunch of images, and it also has a bunch of sizes. So we have these two products, which will be plenty for this video. Then within the product sizes, this is where we need to actually start changing things. All this stuff can stay except for the product ID and the price ID. The product ID and price ID are derived from Stripe. We're using Stripe as the backing for this to handle all of our payments and all that stuff. So we need to make sure that we have that these two point to our actual Stripe instance, or else when we fire our Stripe checkout, it just will not work without these two. So what I actually wanna do now is go ahead and get Stripe set up while we're in the middle of this database stuff. So I'm gonna go over to my Stripe console here. Make sure you get a test environment set up. Uh, make sure that you're in test mode when you're doing this in development. You can see up here, we're using fake data. No real money will be charged. And what we need to do is we need to create a couple products. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna to go to my product catalog. And you can see I've got a couple of fake products in here. We're gonna make some new ones for this video just to show you how it's done. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna create a new product. Let's just say, let's just say we're selling, um, let's just do, yeah, sunglasses here. So we're gonna be selling sunglasses in this project. We're just gonna say my sunglasses, my sunglasses. We're gonna to go to the image upload. I'm going to just say, um, what do I wanna do? Let's just upload this for an image, that'll work. So now we've got our name and image in here. We can go ahead and fill in some more info. For my product tax code, we're gonna say, um, we'll just say general tangible goods. For our pricing, this is not a SaaS project. This is an e-commerce project. So we wanna make sure that this is set to one time. And for our price, let's just say 39.99. Uh, sure, why not? So now that we've done this, we can go ahead and save this product. Now that I have this guy saved, we're gonna go ahead and copy these two IDs. So the important ones here are this product ID. So we're gonna grab this first. I'm gonna go in here and replace this product ID with this new product ID. And then this price ID, we're gonna go ahead and grab this. And I'm gonna replace this with that product ID or that price ID. Um, for the sake of this video, just so that I don't bore you with me going through a hundred different Stripe products, cause it's, you know, it's not that interesting. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna replace all of these with these new ones. When you go to production, obviously you need to make sure that these are real products that actually work. Um, but for right now, this will do the trick. All right, awesome. So now our products are all set up and ready. We have our Stripe set up here, but we have a little bit more to do there. We'll come back to that in a second. For right now, this is ready in the data model. 
Now we need to go ahead and set up some images for our products. If you go into the actual site for every product, you'll notice that we have a bunch of different images here to feature the product, show it off. We built this nice little carousel here. So we need to actually fill these with real content so that the end user will get something cool to look at. What we need to do is we need to point these to Cloudinary images. So I'm gonna go back to my Cloudinary dashboard. I'm gonna go to my uh, home real quick, or sorry, I'm gonna go to programmable media. I'm gonna go to my media explorer. And then I'm just gonna grab some stuff I have in here. We have some random stuff in here. It really doesn't matter. This is not gonna be super pretty because we're not doing production images in here. But when you're using this, make sure that you put real images in here, obviously. So let's just grab a couple of these. Let's just use some of these Cloudinary samples. So let's just say, okay, we wanna grab, um, let's do Cloudinary sample five. So we have Cloudinary sample one through five. So we're just gonna replace all these image IDs with like CLD sample five. Let's do CLD sample four. Let's do um, CLD sample three. Let's do CLD sample two. And let's do, yeah, that's good enough. So we have four real images in here. They're not gonna make a huge amount of sense, but it'll fill it with content. And then, like I said, when you're updating this with your own stuff, make sure you put real stuff in here. The product ID will point up to those initial products which we created. We're hard coding the IDs here because it's just sample temp data. Those are automatically generated on the admin page when we create them. Um, and then yeah, that will go ahead, create our images, we can insert them. And now the last thing I wanna do is set up our tags. I already have two preset tags in here, natural and aerospace. These tags will just be a way for us to group and show off all of our different products. On the site itself, these will show up under as collections. So you can see here, we have the sediment collection, anything formed in nature. That would just be the sediment collection tag. So in here, we're gonna have a natural collection, we're gonna have an aerospace collection. So now that we've done all that, we can insert our seed is ready. And now that this is ready and we have already gone in here and we have updated our .env, we've installed all our dependencies, we can go ahead and set up our database. So we're gonna do pnpm run db push. This is gonna go ahead and take all of our schema within our schema.ts and it's gonna push it into our database. We're gonna go back to our plan and scale instance. I demoted this down to a development branch because we're not putting this in production right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to my main branch. I'm gonna say show tables. And then now we can see all of our different tables have been successfully pushed into our database. Now that we've pushed our tables in, we can go ahead and seed our database. So I'm gonna do pnpm run db seed. That will run our seed.ts file, it'll explode. Oh, whoops, sorry. Uh, before we run our seed.ts, we need to actually do pnpm run dev. This will go ahead and build our project and create our .svelkit tsconfig.json. Uh, now that we've done that, we can go back here and we can do pnpm run db seed. Once we've done that, this will go ahead and insert everything. Uh, this is a holdover from when I was doing this in SQLite way back when, this will be fixed at some point, but it did actually insert everything. So we go ahead and do pnpm run db studio. We're gonna go ahead and open up our Drizzle Studio instance. I'll open this in my browser. And now we can see we have no users, but our product sizes are all these different products we created. Our products, we have these two in here. We've got all this information set and ready, and now our site, it's got content. So with Cloudinary and Planet Scale out of the way, now we need to go ahead and set up Stripe. Stripe is actually quite easy to set up, to be honest. All we need to do is go back to our Stripe console here. I'm gonna go into the developers section. I'm gonna go into my API keys, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab these two. So I'm gonna grab my publishable key down here. Uh, these I'm actually not gonna leak because I do really use these. So you're just gonna have to take my word for the fact that we put this secret key into this .env and I'm gonna edit that out, but it is getting put in there. And now the last thing we need to do is we need to get our Stripe webhook secret. The way we do that is I'm just gonna go down here. I'm going to open up a new uh, terminal here. Make sure you have the Stripe CLI downloaded. I'll have a link down below for where you can get that downloaded. Once you have that ready, all you need to do is log into it and then run pnpm run Stripe listen and this will get everything set up for you you just run this it'll forward it to the correct url and then it'll give you a nice little webhook signing secret once it's ready once we run stripe listen we will get a webhook signing secret here so mine is just this nonsense i'm going to go ahead and grab this i'm going to go up here i'm going to change this replace that in there and now our stripe is ready and the only three things we're missing at this point are github oauth Google OAuth and Resend. I'm gonna show you GitHub OAuth in a moment here, and Resend is super trivial. So with all this stuff together, let's actually get the site running because we can make sure that this all sort of looks good. PNPM run dev. So we're just gonna run our development server here. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up here. 
and I'll take a moment, but you will see the actual site is now working. We have it all set up here. This image right here will probably not be there for you. There are a bunch of different images in here which are pointing, they're hard coded, and they're pointing to our Cloudinary instance. If those are not working, what, you, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna search CLD image switch needed. This will go ahead and pull up the five places where we have images hard coded into the site. It's on the login page, the home page, and a couple different places like up here in the nav bar and stuff. So these will be missing for you. Uh, you can see right here, like on the home page here, this is hard coded into one of our product images. You're obviously gonna wanna switch this out for one of your own. So the way that would work is you just go back into your Cloudinary console, let's switch it out for this image. All right, you're gonna go ahead, click on your image. We're gonna take this public ID right here. We're gonna say this guy. We're gonna go back in here. I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna say Cloudinary sample five. So we go back to our site and we'll see our little home banner up here has been switched out for the sample image. If we go into our collections, we can see in here, we have these two right here. We've got a mountain and some random stock image here. So this is filled up with our sample data. We can click into this guy. We can get all of our information in here. We can see the two images we created and attached to this. Um, like I said, these are very random images, but it's working. We have our site up and running. Now that we've done all that stuff and everything is set up here, uh, let's go ahead and do the GitHub OAuth. I'm not gonna do Google OAuth in this because it, frankly it sucks and it's not that hard. It just, you have to get Google to review it for you and it takes an eternity. Uh, but GitHub's a lot less painful. I'm gonna go ahead down to settings. I'm gonna go down here to developer settings. We're gonna go down to OAuth apps. I already have the OAuth app created. I don't wanna create another one. Um, all you have to do is just create a new OAuth app here. We'll give it an application name. Homepage URL should be localhost 5173, I believe. Um, and then set your authorization callback URL. That's the most important part. I have it listed in the readme what that needs to be, but it's just uh, localhost 5173 slash auth slash callback slash GitHub. That's really important that you get that one right because if you point that to the wrong place, it'll call back to the wrong place and it just won't work. So make sure you get this set up correctly. Once we have our application registered, you can go into it here. Uh, you can click on the project, you can get your client ID and you can get your client secret. Go back into your .env over here paste those two in and GitHub will be up and running. Google OAuth is basically the same process. You just have to go through the Google Cloud Console thing and it's a real pain in the ass. So we're not gonna worry about that right now. We might do that in the auth video. And then for resend, resend is also super, super easy. We just go to resend.com slash overview, create your account, get everything set up, go into your API keys section, go ahead and create a new API key, give it a name, full access, and then copy paste that in and paste it right here. And with all that done, you should have a functional site. We go into our collections here. We're gonna go ahead, let's just add my second product to our cart. I'm gonna go over here to my cart instance. We're gonna remove that one because that's actually a holdover from the other project because it's all stored in local storage. I went ahead, we have one guy in our product. We have one guy in our cart. We're gonna go ahead and hit checkout. We're gonna continue as guest. So we'll go ahead in here. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in some fake info. Um, it's a completely random address. It's not my address. I was just putting in whatever because you need to put in something. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put in a fake credit card here. Use 4242-4242 for the fake credit card, which will function correctly. Go ahead and do that. Uh, give it an expiration date, a random CV. Uh, I don't need to save anything and we're gonna go ahead and just hit pay. We'll run all this stuff here Give it a moment. It'll take a second to process. It'll say check It'll take us back to the thank you for ordering page. You can see down here within our stripe CLI We got a bunch of webhook events. They all succeeded with 200 and if we go back over here I'm gonna go ahead and do pnpm run db studio We're gonna open this up here Now that this is open in here we can go into our orders table, and we will now have a brand new order. We've got this order right here. We can check out our order products. We ordered one of the second 1616. It was ordered here. Everything is ready. This site is up and working locally. Obviously, you're gonna wanna customize this a lot before you take it to production. The assets used in here, like the stuff from Sediment, you can't use, but everything else, the code and all that, it's open source for a reason. You are free to use it. I'd love to see what you guys come up with and make. If you have any questions on this or need clarification, I have a link to the Discord down below. Make sure to join and ask questions there. And uh, yeah, hopefully this is helpful for you guys. If it is, make sure you star the repo, and I'll talk to you very soon.